Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you're very welcome. My name is Laura and in this video I'm going to go into a lot more depth on what the quantitative reasoning of the UCAT section is really like and how to do your very best in this section. If you haven't already, please go hit that subscribe button down below and check out the rest of my channel for more content and videos on how to do well on your application process to medical schools in the UK. So what actually is the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT? This section for many people is just known as the math section of the UCAT. It basically is looking at your ability to manipulate and use data and numbers. The maths that they'll ask you to do is no harder than GCSE or AS level, so don't worry too much about going into crazy A-level maths and numbers and getting all stressed out about it. The quantitative reasoning section is the third section of the UCAT and it is following on from the verbal reasoning and decision making sections. In this section, they'll give you questions in the formats of graphs and diagrams. They might th throw in some shapes and some charts as well. So it's a good idea to have a bit of a brush up on your ability to use these. So you have 36 questions to answer in 24 minutes. This means that on average, you'll have about 40 seconds per question, which is not that much time when you've got to work your way through all of the information that they're giving you. When taking into account the fact that you've got to read through the information that they've given you and carry out multiple steps of calculations, it really isn't that much time to answer these quantitative reasoning questions. This section can earn you quite a lot of extra points if you do take the time to brush up on your mental maths and your ability to use the calculator effectively. I would suggest a good idea would be to go back through your GCSE notes and if you have them or just simply look up some GCSE formula or things like percentages and ratios and some conversions which can be very useful when struggling with time instead of calculating them all on the on-screen calculator. If you would like more advice on how to use the on-screen calculator effectively and to the best of your ability, make sure to go and check out my other YouTube video all about how to use the UCAT calculator. Simple mental maths things to go and brush up on would include things like ratios, percentages, speed, time and distance, some graphs and maybe some Venn diagrams and charts. Maybe some conversions like from grams to kilograms or meters to centimeters. Maybe some area or volume uh, formula as well, like maybe the area of a circle or the volume of a sphere. Things like this really are useful and you could get asked questions about these or the area of a triangle. Nothing too crazy, but definitely to have the basics in order will really, really help in the quantitative reasoning section. So for me to begin with, this section was probably one that I was slightly stronger at because I was doing A-level maths and I had done further maths at GCSE. However, it did take me by surprise on the amount of information that they could give you to work out from in the short space of time. So definitely taking the time to brush up on your skills beforehand will really help this section. So now onto some tips and advice that I wish I had known before I had done the UCAT and I just want to share with you because I think they really will make a difference to your ability to do well in this section. So my first tip is to eliminate any sort of outliers in your answers. So if you look down at the multiple choice, there's usually about four multiple choice answers and you might be able to instantly see that some of the answers are automatically impossible. If this is the case, make sure to exclude them and then start narrowing down on your answers from the others that are left over. This will really help speed up things and save you valuable seconds on each question. As I've said before, familiarising yourself with some of your basic knowledge that you learnt at GCSE for maths is a great idea, especially for things like fractions and decimals and percentages. Conversion between these is critical and if you're not that confident on them, I definitely advise going and looking over these before the UCAT. 
Another tip is to read the question carefully. As much as you don't want to waste time, skim reading the question to make sure that you've definitely got the right information from it is critical because there's no point going through the entire question to find out that you've actually missed a vital step at the very beginning. Sometimes they'll like to throw you off and put in some misleading questions and answers. So really do be careful whenever reading through what you're being asked to do. Another tip that I can't stress enough is round really awkward numbers because for me, whenever I started doing it, I was doing each number and then typing it into the calculator. And if it's got weird decimal points, like maybe 0.73, by rounding it up to 0.75, it really makes things easier. And at the end of the day, because it is multiple choice answers, most likely you're going to be able to get a very rough estimate of an answer and be able to then select the correct answer that goes along with that. Don't waste time in putting all of the really awkward numbers into the calculator. There's no point. Try and round them to even bigger decimals and then um, just doing them in your head for quick mental maths. So a piece of advice that I probably didn't make enough use of at the time was to look at the answers before looking at all the data. There's going to be a lot of data that they can chuck at you from graphs and tables and lots of other ways. So make sure to look through the answers before starting to look back up at the data that they've given you, because more often than not, the answers can sometimes give you a bit of a hint as to what you're looking out for in the numbers that they've given you. Another piece of advice that can really catch people out is not checking the units that the answer or questions are in. Some of these can be really, really sneaky ways that the examiners have altered things to make it even more challenging than the question already is. So do double check units before submitting your answers. Like I said in the other videos for other sections, don't get too panicked and hung up about one individual question. Simply guess it, flag it in the little flag icon at the bottom of your screen and then move on to the next question, wasting valuable time checking over something that you're really, really struggling with is not going to help you gain points. In fact, it's just going to make you more stressed for the rest of the section. So definitely flag and skip is a great way of saving time and making sure that you get the maximum number of points because all the questions in that section will be worth the same number of points. So for me, a piece of information that I was really used to using was the fact that they have a whiteboard or a sort of notepad that you can jot your sort of steps and working out on, which makes it a lot easier than trying to remember a load of numbers in your head and also can speed things up. And if you forget something out of panic, you simply just look down at your notes and you can see where you're going through. Don't worry, the examiners won't see what you've written. It's just so that you can keep track of all your steps of your calculations. So obviously you want to score as well as possible in this section. So by following some of those tips and advice that I've given, hopefully you'll be able to do just that. This section can gain a lot of people a lot of points, but it can also be a huge stumble for some people that aren't confident on their basic math skills. It really is just trying to determine whether you're able to rationally go through pieces of information and pick out the right sort of um, answers from all of the data and text that they give you. Avoid overthinking questions. Sometimes the more obvious the answer is, sometimes that is actually the right answer. And if you are really stuck, do just guess and move on because there's no point wasting time. I hope you found some of those tips quite relatable and if you are struggling on anything in particular, please get in touch. I would be more than happy to help out. My Instagram is The Content Medic and if you're really, really struggling and want more advice, even just leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to get back in touch with you. Sometimes you'll do the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT and get really, really high scores and others you just won't. And it really can be quite hit or miss. So don't beat yourself up about it. Just implement some of the tips that I've given you. And over time, you will see gradual improvements with timing and with your confidence. My last piece of advice would be not to start timing yourself straight away. These can be quite tricky and challenging and putting time pressure on top of that is definitely not something I would advise straight away. 
the key sort of to this is to get used to the online calculator and all the sort of keyboard shortcuts that come along with that and then implement the timings on top after a little bit of practice prior to that. In this section, the average score can be anywhere from 600 to about 650 and sometimes you'll be bang on that and really happy and other times it just won't be that case, but don't worry about it. So I hope you can start implementing some of those tips straight away and boost your score and um, try and focus on just some little tweaks and changes and you will over time see a massive difference. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video and found it useful please give it a like down below and if you haven't already go hit the bell and subscribe down below to my YouTube channel to keep up to date with everything that I'll be posting about how to do your very best in the UCAT, in interviews and your medical application process in general. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye!